order. We are now officially in recession. Nararamdaman na natin ang epekto ng mga lockdown sa ng COVID-19 pandemic. Ayon sa Philippine Statistics Authority, lumiit ng 16.5% ang ating ekonomiya kumpara sa parehong panahon noong nakaraang taon. Inaasahan ito ang pinakamalaking pagbagsak ng ating gross domestic product mula noong 1985. This crash precipitated urgent measures from the government, one of which is the recently passed Bayanihan II, which should bring around 165 billion pesos to stimulate economic activity. Another solution is the one presented to us today for consideration. Monetary authorities are pushing for the enactment of the proposed financial institution strategic transfer to help all banks sell their non-performing assets while availing of fiscal incentives. Hindi na ito bago para sa ating mga banko. Noong tumama ang 1997 Asian financial crisis, ay pinayagan rin ang ilang mga banko na linisin ang kanilang balance sheets gamit ang mga fiscal incentives sa ilalim ng Special Purpose Vehicle Act of 2002. This new measure is expected to have the same effect as SPV based on the Securities and Exchange Commission's data, a total of 34 31 SPVs were registered with the SEC. BSP data showed that these SPVs, one, enabled the offloading of 88 billion pesos worth of loans under the original SPV, while 31.95 billion pesos of loans passed through the amended SPV. Kung ating susiriin, isasabatas ang SPV law, limang taon pa, matapos tumama ang Asian crisis noong 1987. Kaya, kailangan nating tanungin kung ito na ba ang kailangan natin ngayon habang hindi pa natin alam ang tunay na epekto ng pandemya sa ating ekonomiya. Based on the preliminary baseline assessment conducted by the BSP to estimate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, top banks in the country see their non-performing loan or NPL ratio to be at 4.63%, 6.19%, and 11.51% for the top 20 universal and commercial banks, thrift banks, and rural cooperative banks, respectively. This is compared to last year's 2.1%. Based on these numbers alone and the assurances from the banking sector, we see that the threat to our banks is not immediate, but like all things pandemic, we have to prepare. It might be better to deliberate now rather than later. Mabuti nang handa tayo kung sakaling kailanganin. This committee would like to stop playing catch up with the pandemic and prepare the policy for the worst. I would like to acknowledge the presence of my fellow senators A lot of them experts in the field of economics and finance, and I'm glad that they could join us today, who committed to deliberate this measure. I would also like to thank the agencies and experts from the banking sector who are here with us. May I ask uh, the Secretary to read for the record the participants today, but first I would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Marcos, Villar, Lapid, Grilon, and Cayetano. And... Um, Maybe the Secretariat can now introduce our resource persons. And then later on, I will request those uh, of uh, my fellow senators who would like to give an opening statement to manifest uh, their, in their, their intention to. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honors. For today's public hearing, we have the following resource persons. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Ma'am Lynn I. Javier. From the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Assistant Secretary Carlos Bernardo O. Abad Santos. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Director Rachel Raymalante. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, we have 
Mr. Elcid C. Pangilinan. From the Development Bank of the Philippines, we have Mr. Emmanuel G. Urbosa. From the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation, we have Assistant Vice President, Attorney Fernan Regan P. Zafranco. From the National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation, we have Vice President Romeo Roldan and Vice President Rosabella Jose. From the Social Security System, we have Attorney Mark Lawrence Monterde. From the Small Business Corporation, we have Ma Maria Luna E. Cacanando and Mr. Frank Gonzaga. From the National Housing Authority, we have Ma'am Wilhelmina D. Hernandez Mendoza. From the Philippine Competition Commission, we have Attorney Faye Condes de Sagun. From the Bankers Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Benjamin Picastillo and Mr. Arnel and Almaden. From the BIR, we have Sorry, we have attorney, uh, Ms. Marisol Girang. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, I would like to acknowledge also the presence of Senators Go, Binay, Recto, and Angara. Uh, perhaps uh, we can. I, I, Senator Amy Marcos raised her hand. Would, would you have an opening statement, ma'am? Sorry, Madam Chair, uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning. And uh, I uh, filed this bill uh, very early on um, because I was part of the committee in the lower house um, in 2002. As the chairwoman correctly stated, we were playing catch up and um, it was done very hastily over the Christmas and we rushed it. And um, it was at that time a very controversial and apparently risky venture. Uh, with great anxiety over the years since 2003 when it was finally uh, ratified. Until today, I have watched it with uh, anxiety and later on was encouraged that, in fact, this could be very, very helpful. This week, uh, the SEC has on its own uh, already provided the guidelines on corporate debt vehicles. And uh, we can see that everyone is behind this effort together with the BSP and the other agencies concerned. So today we have great experience in uh, this effort, uh, a lot more confident, and uh, we know where the pitfalls are. Firstly, the clarification on the 40% foreign ownership when real assets are involved. Also, clearly the 18-month uh, period for filing is a very short one, hence I recommended a 36 plus 24 period. The bureaucratic uh, difficulties of obtaining a certificate for eligibility also must be addressed so that many more corporations can be helped. We have also the experience of many cases uh, like the uh, Vic, Vic Villavicencio suing of the SPV and other cases that as we go along uh, may have bearing on this new bill. I will raise them accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Um, Senator Drilon. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just briefly, it will be recalled that uh, when we were about to approved by a Nihan one. There was a proposal to include the fist bill, which you are now hearing, as part of the Bayanihan one, or Bayanihan two, I'm not so sure anymore. But in any case, uh, I think it was Bayanihan one where the Banco Central requested me to try to incorporate the, uh, this bill into the uh, Bayanihan law. And uh, of course, because it was a little complicated and needed a lot of uh, committee work, 
um, many of our colleagues uh, uh, demurred from its inclusion uh, in the Bayanihan law and therefore uh, requested that uh, uh, the same be incorporated or be heard as a separate measure. And in this, in this, it is in this context that I'm extending our, our appreciation to the committee chaired by, uh, by, by Senator Po in uh, giving priority to this uh, measure. Uh, we committed to the good center that uh, we will uh, be active and uh, assist in the best way we can uh, to have this uh, uh, bill debated on the plenary as soon as possible. Yes, the purpose of this bill is to strengthen our financial system in the, uh, on, on the premise that uh, the uh, present health pandemic will uh, adversely affect our financial sector. Uh, however, um, the uh, uh, media today carried quotations and assessments from our central bank governor, uh, Benjamin Jokno, uh, who said that the while the global health crisis has led to concerns that banks may suffer a sharp rise in bank loans, in bad loans, uh, uh, in his assessment, this will not be the case. He said we expect any increase in the non-performing loans to be modest and manageable. And uh, we do not expect uh, the, uh, and it is expected that uh, whatever is the effect of uh, the global crisis on our banking system would come about the end of the year. In fact, as of today, our NPL ratio uh, of the local banks is approximately 2.4% and is expected to rise to about 4.6%, which uh, Senator, which uh, uh, Governor Jokmo said was manageable. Nevertheless, uh, Madam Chair, it is good that we have this early hearing so that we can already anticipate to the best we can as to how to respond to the expected difficulties among uh, many of our, of, of our, of our industries uh, that, uh, that uh, may experience as a result of this health crisis. So it is in this context that we are thankful to the uh, committee for uh, um, uh, putting this on the, on the top of the calendar of the Committee on Banks. And we look forward to working closely with the committee to craft the uh, legislation that can effectively respond to what we're facing today. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, and I also would like to thank the good minority leader for your presence today, especially, because I know that you really reviewed for this and uh, your wisdom and inputs will be greatly appreciated. I'm sure make this law even better, this bill even better. Senator Villar was raising her hand. Um, sound, please. Senator, please unmute. Unmute me. Uh, okay, now can you hear me? Yes, Senator, go ahead. Okay. Please. Uh, vivid pa sa akin yung nangyari noong 1997 na ang dami-daming kumpanya ang nagka-problema. And one of the options na available sa kanila noon is magdasyon and pago sa mga banks para hindi sila maging uh, bad loans. Oo. Yung ibibigay na nila sa banko yung kanilang property para ang tawag doon ay dasyon and pago para uh, masara nila yung loan nila. And the banks are, are amenable to that. Except na wala ka nang pera, magbabayad ka pa ng taxes para idasyon and pago mo dun sa, sa banko yung property mo para wala ka ng utang. And uh, this uh, law, the SPAB law, came in in, 20, uh, in 19, uh, 2002. 
that was five years after the ano, the the recession. So it came a little too late. So ako po ay natutuwa na maaga pa, hindi pa nangyayari yung nangyari noong 1997, tayo ay nagpe-prepare na para sa mga kumpanyang magkakaproblema dito sa recession na ito. So uh, I'm very supportive of this bill. Thank you, Senator Villar. Um, it's good to hear personal experiences about the SPAV law. And as noted, it's better to prepare early. Uh, do we have any other senators who would like to give a brief statement? No? Ah, Senator Lapid. Uh, belated happy birthday, sir. Uh, salamat po. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Uh, yung uh, opening statement ko sa atas na sekretary. Marami salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Um, I would like to request the secretary to please, um, well, no, I think if there's anybody who would like to give a presentation from any of our resource persons. Yes? Madam Chair, Senator Angara po. Ah, Senator Angara, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, for recognizing me. Just want to thank the chair for uh, hearing this bill and I confirm what the... A uh, good minority leader, Senator Drillon, said a while ago that there were moves to include this in the Bayanihan 2 bill, but for in the interest of, uh, of time, uh, we wanted to uh, fast track that bill. And uh, we thank the chair for having this hearing uh, uh, in a very timely manner. And again, we'd like to express support uh, since this is a BSP supported bill. We'd like to express support for the bill. And we also put on record our commendation for the Banco Central Madam Chair, for being very activist in its approach in trying to uh, help our banking system in opening up liquidity for, uh, for uh, more economic activity. So I think uh, I'll add my voice to those commending uh, Governor Ben Diokno and the, his team over at the BSP. And uh, thank you again, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Angara. Uh, it's actually a relief that you're joining us today. I know that uh, you're very knowledgeable about these things. Also, uh, Senator um, Senator Recto, would you like to add anything before we begin? No? All right. Uh, since this is a measure that is uh, being pushed, and rightly so, by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, I would like to request if they would have any opening statement or a presentation so that uh, we can... We will have a basis uh, from which uh, to ask all of our questions uh, eventually. So if there's a presentation from the Banco Central and then uh, the Department of Finance or any other government agency and also the, the, bank, uh, the banking organizations, uh, we, will, we will go from there. So let's begin with the BSP. Um, may I ask the representative present? Yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. Um, good morning to all our senators here. I'll just share my screen, Madam Chair. Okay, um, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Okay, um, Go good ahead. morning again. I'm Senator Grace Paul, Chair of the Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies. Esteemed members of this committee, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Before we go through the salient features of the this act, I wish to start my presentation with a brief description of the Philippine experience during the Asian financial crisis. Basically, I will just echo the sentiment shared also by our beloved senators on this um, act. This will be followed by the objectives of the FIST Act and how this relates to the current banking system performance. And then I will go through some of the salient features of uh, the proposed law. So the Philippine banking system entered the Asian financial crisis with strong fundamentals, while the non-performing loan ratio or NPL ratio of the Philippine banking system ranged from 3% to 3.4% in the first half of 1997. This slowly climbed and peaked at 18.6% in 2001 based on DSP data. Since banking system NPLs tend to build up over time, there did not seem to be an immediate need for banking sector intervention. This delay resulted in marked deterioration of NPL ratio Philippine banking system, 
compared to its regional peers in jurisdictions where aggressive interventions were introduced as early as 1997. Through the SPV Act, banks were able to offload 146.2 billion in NPAs, mostly in the form of non-performing loans. Out of the total NPAs transferred, only 36.1 billion in NPAs availed of tax benefits under the SPV Act, or around 25%. SPVs were also able to sell off NPAs since only 12.4 billion, or around 8% in NPAs, remained in SPV books upon expiration of the Act. The enactment of the SPV law complemented the BSP's efforts to strengthen prudential standards in the areas of corporate governance, capital, and risk management. From the effectivity of the SPV law until, ex in, until its expiration, loan portfolio of the banking system expanded, NPL ratio steadily declined, and loan loss buffers will build up over time. Banks' NPL ratio dropped from 14.7% as of end December 2002 to only 3.6% as of end December 2009. Latest BSP data show that the NPL ratio of banks as of end June 2020 stood at 2.5%. Loan loss reserves have also been increasing since the start of this year, resulting in a high NPL coverage ratio of 109.8% as of end June 2020. The enactment of the FIST law will assist the financial system in performing its role of efficiently mobilizing savings and investments for the country's economic recovery, as well as its sustained growth and de development. Through the transfer of NPAs, banks will not have to incur costs related to the management and administration of non-performing assets. Liquidity within the banking system will increase and bank capital will be freed up thereby increasing the system's risk-bearing capacity and ability to expand investment and lending activities. Failure to address high NPA ratios adversely affect investor and depositor confidence, ultimately hampering the efficient conduct of financial intermediation. Empirical data also show that high non-performing asset ratios lead to a reduction in credit supply, rise in unemployment, and slowdown in overall economic activity. The banking system has built-in buffers which provided with the capacity to internalize losses on their exposures, as well as continue with their lending and investment activities. Banks are well capitalized with a risk-based capital adequacy ratio of 15.4% on solo basis as of end December 2019. Overall liquidity position of banks remains ample and steady at levels that are well above the regulatory minimum. As of end December 2019, the liquidity coverage ratio of the Universal Commercial Bank was at 169.9%, vis-a-vis the minimum requirement of 100%. As shared by Senator Paul earlier, the BSP conducted the baseline survey of top banks on the impact of COVID-19 on their operations. Allow me to share with you some of the results of the survey. NPL ratio is estimated to double from 2.4% as of end March 2020 to 4.6% as of end December 2020, as borrowers' capacity to pay may be weakened by disruption in their cash flows. Despite the increase in soured loans, the NPL coverage ratio is projected to remain above the 50% um, by end December 2020. Deterioration in asset quality is projected to reduce the bank's consolidated card to 14.8% as of December 2020, from 15% as of end March 2020. Menwa, me Meanwhile, the overall liquidity position of the banking system remains generally sufficient. Banks do not foresee a need to tap additional funding sources or activate their contingency funding plans in the near future. Now, this slide shows the major features of the FIST Act. Allow me to describe um, some of this in more detail. The FIST law encourages financial institutions to sell their non-performing assets to asset management companies that specialize in the resolution of distressed assets by providing fiscal incentives. The BSP agrees that the FISC corporation should be subject to minimum capitalization. However the, however, the BSP recommends that in lieu of setting a minimum capital under the law, the setting of said amount should be left to the SEC or the appropriate re regulatory agency. In this way, the capitalization requirements for the corporations may vary depending on the financial institutions which they intend to, to transact with. For instance, a lower capitalization requirement may be allowed for FIS corporations, which deal with BSP licensed 
granting institutions like non-stock savings and loan associations, own shops, and non-bank credit card issuers. The covered institution, financial institutions include BSP and SEC regulated financial institutions, GFIs and GOCCs, and the BSP. The concept of true sale, the transfer of assets should be in the nature of a true sale without recourse. Parties may agree to sharing of profits, the transfer of financial institutions must not own more than 10% or have direct or indirect control over the transfer fist corporation. We are also proposing that no court, except the court of, court of Appeals and the Supreme Court, may issue injunctive relief on the transfer of NPAs under the FIST Act. And FISTCs are required to set up consumer protection mechanisms. The proposed provisions also include that the Secretary of Finance be given the following authorities under the Act to extend of uh, extension of two-year and five-year entitlement periods to avail of tax exemptions and fee privileges under the FIST law by a maximum period of another two years and five years, respectively. Extension of the 24-month period to apply as FIST C by another 24 months, and extension for a maximum of two years of the cutoff period for eligible NPAs. In this regard, the BSP suggests that the cutoff date be set at 31 December 2020 to provide financial institutions with enough time to make a thorough assessment of their borrower's credit worthiness and paying capacity. Now this slide presents the fiscal incentives for transfers made in accordance with the provisions of this act. Even though the banking system has built in buffers, this risk bearing capacity is not unlimited. This, the establishment of resolution frameworks such as the FIST law will ensure that distressed financial institutions have a mechanism to strengthen their balance sheet. The non-performing assets and non-performing loans ratios, they are lagging indicators of banking system performance. Thus, a high NPA and NPL ratio would already point to severe weaknesses in the financial system and potentially reflect poor state of the economy. The swift enactment of the FIST law, notwithstanding strong banking fundamentals, will promote investor and depositor confidence and mitigate the harmful feedback effect of a financial system crisis on the real economy. Um, this ends my presentation, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, perhaps we can ask the Bankers Association present or and maybe the BIR also because for sure there's a revenue impact on this. Um, can we begin with the representative of the Bankers Association? Uh, yes, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Ben Castillo. Um, we submitted a letter to the committee yesterday, uh, which uh, is likely part of your documentation for today's committee hearing. But I just want to highlight that the Bankers Association is very supportive of the initiative taken by the Senate in pursuing this legislation, uh, uh, we believe that uh, this will prepare the banking system for the expected increase in the non-performing assets arising from the community quarantines that we have implemented to contain the pandemic. Uh, we, the BAP have actively supported uh, and contributed in the deliberation of the House Bill 6816, and we're looking forward to be doing the same uh, with Senate Bills 1594, 1596, and 1652. Uh, and we are ready to support the Senate, uh, and we are encouraging the Senate uh, to expeditiously pass a consolidated bill. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. How about from the BIR? Do you have a representative from the BIR? Um, Comsec, Attorney Bartolome, do we have uh, a representative from the BIR? 
Hello. Hello. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Hello. Ma'am, uh, on our part, uh, siyempre we are again because of the uh, tax exemption um, stated on the bill, this affects our collection for the year. We are not in okay. exemptions given. Um, could you repeat that? Um, it wasn't very clear, a bit choppy. Uh, we'd like to hear what your projections are or the impact that we'll have in our collection. Uh, well, uh, in terms of our collection, it will affect it because the There's an adverse. There's an in, there's an adverse impact collection on our collection. Okay, so do you have any position on this proposed bill from the BIR? Uh, right now, right now, mom, we are not in favor of this tax exemption. Okay. Uh, of course, that's expected from the uh, revenue generating agency. But um, uh, Senator Drillon is recognized. Just, just uh, uh, a comment, uh, Madam Chair. The Bureau of Internal Revenue is a very important resource person here as there will be incentives granted and uh, it will affect our revenue stream. Uh, with all due respect to the representative of BIR, I wish they would send somebody more ranking who can speak for the BIR. And we could hardly understand uh, the, uh, uh, the statement of the BIR representative. So we would request that there be a better participation from the BIR at the next hearing as this is that this bill will affect our revenue stream. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. I hope that message can be sent to our BIR uh, officials. I agree with you, uh, Senator Drillon. I agree with you. I don't think uh, they realize the importance of their participation in today's hearing and the impact that it will bring also uh, for the bottom line of the agency. Uh, Senator Recto is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Maybe I can ask the BIR at this juncture, how much tax subsidy did we provide under SPAB Law 1? The BIR representative? Did you hear the question of Senator Recto? Um, sir, right now we have, we don't have the data, but we will um, note that Submit uh, we will we will note it and we will provide it as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, just a comment. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my understanding was that this, this was a priority measure of the finance department as well, uh, in conjunction with the BSP. And now the testimony of the BAR here is that they're against uh, the tax provisions or incentives in this measure. But without the tax incentives in this measure, there is no bill, uh, Madam Chair, no? And, uh, and I'm surprised that they are not even prepared for the meeting today to give us already how much tax, sub tax subsidy did, did we provide under SPAB 1 and SPAB 2. SPAB 2 was the extension. Well, um, Senator Recto, perhaps we can hear... Uh, Senator Jolon is... I'm disappointed at the cavalier attitude taken by the Bureau of Internal Revenue on the passage of this measure. It would appear that the, the committee and the Senate is more interested in the passage of this measure in support of the Banco Central. The BIR has uh, taken a cavalier attitude and does not, is not even prepared uh, to state its position. And as Senator Recto so correctly said, uh, while the uh, uh, Banco Central and 
to my to my knowledge, the DOF secretary is in support of this bill. Here comes the BIR saying that uh, they are opposed to the bill. So, uh, you, you know, Madam Chair, this is a little disappointment to me. And um, uh, the chair may consider pos uh, um, suspending today's uh, hearing until the BIR can come up with their own position and sending a more uh, ranking official and resource person than what we have today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Drilon. Uh, perhaps uh, we can hear from the Department of Finance representative uh, with regards to the comment on the comment of the BIR today, if they've actually reached out to the BIR to express the importance of this bill. Uh, do we have a representative? Uh, the Treasurer Leia from the Department of Finance. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, and to all the members of the Committee on Banks. Um, we have earlier sent our estimate in terms of the revenues to be forgone, including all the other fees that are covered under the bill. Our estimates are uh, range from 3.3 billion pesos to about 13.2 billion. Um, assumptions were based on the earlier experience uh, during the Asian financial crisis. Um, yes. We have also sent already our letter to the good senator in terms of the Department of Finance, strong support for the bill. And in fact, uh, we're also lobbying then for the inclusion of the bill under the Bayanihan too. So we also uh, note that the bill has also been included in the president's um, state of the nation address. And um, for the Department of Finance, would highly appreciate if the bill can be passed this September together with the Bayanin to, to be able to really maximize the benefits of all the emergency measures that the government is taking to be able to fight the pandemic. Madam Chair, thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. All right. Um, maybe we can ask uh, Senator Drilon also because he's, he suggested that we continue this hearing another time when we have a more prepared representative from the BIR. But maybe now if uh, some senators would like to ask questions from our resource persons present here today, but, but certainly, unfortunately, we will have to schedule another hearing definitely um, in the coming uh, days. But maybe while the BSP is here, if, if I may start with my question first to the BSP, are there other countries using a similar SPV mechanism to address uh, the pandemic or their current economic crisis? And second, I would like to also hear uh, the, we, what is the current financial health of our banks at the, as today as it stands? And what the, I know that you had in your presentation uh, a prediction, but maybe you can elaborate a little now so with the first question, uh, is there any country in the world that is employing this type of mechanism? Uh, um, good morning, Madam Chair. As far as the SPV is concerned, there are still discussions, Madam Chair, on um, countries that would use this because most of their uh, relief measures that they have granted also focus on liquidity. But we will get back to the Senate on this to identify which countries um, implemented the SPV um, vehicle also for resolution. But in the past, in the Asian financial crisis, most of the uh, Southeast Asian nations uh, implemented the SPV, uh, an SPV provision to dispose of their um, non-performing loans or non-performing assets. As to the health of the banking system, I believe the banking system was able to build up enough um, buffers, adequate buffers, since the Asian financial crisis. That's why we're, um, the banking industry has a capital adequacy ratio that is um, that has um, that is 15 percent, around 15 percent, more than the 10 percent minimum requirement of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Liquidity coverage ratio, such as the liquidity position of the banking industry, is also high. The non-performing ratio as of June 2020, it's at 2.5 percent. That's uh, that already exhibited um, a bit of an increase in trend from 2.1 percent, I guess, at the start of the year. So um, basically, as I've also mentioned. In uh, my presentation, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, the, currently the, the banking industry has adequate buffers to internalize the losses that they have assessed so far. 
um, um, on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. But the non-performing loans and non-performing assets, they actually build up over time. So that's why the BSP is advocating for the early passage of this law, just to provide a ready facility for the banking industry to be able to offload their non-performing assets. Right, Senator Rector is recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, recognizing me. I'll take the opportunity to ask a few questions so that when we come to the floor, uh, hopefully by then, wala na tayong itatanong. Mabilisan natin ipapasa to, uh, Madam Chair. No? Just a few questions. Um, the Central Bank says that our capital adequacy ratio is roughly 15%. Okay? And our non-performing loans today is only at 2.5%. What do you expect the NPLs to look like by the end of the year? Um, sir, if we will rely on the uh, estimate of the banking industry based on the results of the baseline survey conducted by the mm -hmm. Banco Central, it will double at around 4.6% at the end of the year. So capital, re capital adequacy ratio Because I'm sorry, could you repeat that? We we can't hear you. Your your connection is distorted. Okay. While we are waiting for her to go online again, maybe uh, Yeah, Madam Chair? Maybe yes. I can Hello. take the opportunity to ask. With, with your permission, yeah. the uh, yeah. uh, representative of the Secretary of the uh, Finance Department. Uh, um, I can answer. Uh, could you repeat that, Senator Recto? Uh, while we're waiting for the BSP, I had many questions for the BSP, but since there is a problem with the uh, connection, maybe I can ask a few questions of the Finance Department. Yes, I'll be the representative of the Finance Department present here today. Uh, yes, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, please go ahead. Okay. Okay, um, Senator Racto. Yeah, Leah, is that you? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank we you. Thank you for me. that, Leah. Yeah, uh, sir, sir, we have with me also um, just to recognize uh, the um, Department of Finance representatives who did also the estimates on the tax for gun under the bill. Yeah, so the, the tax for gun, based on our experience in SPAM 1 and 2, uh, and if we pass this bill, it's three to thirteen billion only. Is that what you're saying? That's our estimate, uh, um, Senator Recto. And that is for the next five years. Yes, um, because uh, we did an estimate here uh, using the assumptions of the experience of the past. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So not 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 it. It's mm -hmm. very small in that sense. Yes, sir. Uh, because in the assumptions here, um, there would be a 35 discount and only 25% would avail of the tax benefits. So that's the... Again, 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 can you repeat that? What is the discount? It's about 35%. Only 54% of the ROPA will be transferred at 35% discount and only 25% will avail of the tax benefit. So that's the low end of the range. Okay. And that... And those uh, tax subsidies will eventually go to banks and to the SPAB. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And to the buyers of the properties after the SPAB, right? Then they will, yeah, they can avail of those benefits, uh, Senator. Okay. Now, is there anything in this bill that will help borrowers? Halimbawa, rightfully, a good point made by uh, Senator Villar earlier. Yung dasyon impago, they still have to pay taxes. So, is there anything here that we are foregoing taxes for dasyon impago to help naman the borrowers? Hmm. Oh, meron naman labas doon. Senator, may I uh, request the BSP also to uh, answer the question? Yes, ma'am. May I introduce our um, member of our... Uh, or just to answer the question on the provisions of the law, ma'am. 
No, or should we, it, it's a policy question. Eh. Should we also assist the borrowers? Diba? Uh, oh. Yes, um, yes, Mr. Chair. To make that, it uh, easier uh, for the banks to, uh, para, to foreclose or to be able to sell their NPAs if they have a good relationship with the borrower and the borrower makes a decision in Pago, why not take away those taxes as well? Yeah. Uh, that would be good for the borrowers, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. And then uh, some additional questions for the BSP and the BAP. Is there anything in the bill that we are changing the relationship of borrowers and lenders? Such as, for example, it is easier for the banks to foreclose on borrowers during the pandemic. Uh, if I may, uh, yes, please. Uh, yeah, Senator Rector, Ben yes. um, uh, uh, Regardless of whether we are in a pandemic situation or not, the foreclosure, the, no, the usual foreclosure proceedings uh, will uh, normally require stretch timing. Uh, and um, uh, that uh, is uh, a concern that could be addressed uh, with an appropriate legislation, such as the SPAB law. Um, and that, I think, is one advantage yeah. that we can yeah. anticipate. Yeah. Uh, perhaps yeah. 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 Us, uh, our lawyer from the Banco Central, if, he, if there's additional uh, features that... Uh, will benefit both the banks and the borrowers in that uh, in that case. No, Thank you. The question I'm, I'm asking is that, are we changing the relationship of borrowers and lenders in this bid from existing uh, law? On the particular, if I may, uh, yes. on the particular uh, account that will be sold off to uh, a fish company or to a SPAB, uh, the the relationship of creditor debtor uh, will no longer be present for that no. particular yes no, we understand that we understand that all i'm saying is that are we making is there any feature in the bill because i've not read the entire all the other bills under fist no or even that of the house version are we are we for example allowing the banks to foreclose earlier oh, on the borrower yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I I refer I refer that to the to the lawyers for if I if I could. Uh, um. If I may, um, sir, uh, it doesn't really prompt the banks to foreclose earlier on the buyer because uh, based on the credit risk management um, guidelines issued by the BSP, before you could actually go to foreclosure, you have exhausted all means and. Um, mode of collecting from the borrower. Now, the proposed right. bill has a provision that the FISC could actually restructure the loan. That is, they could condone interest, provide more longer terms for the borrower. And uh, in terms of relationship, um, Senator, uh, uh, once the FISC purchases those non-performing loans from the bank, they will now become the lender to the borrower. Okay. Would, okay. Just to follow up on this on this question, no, uh, Limbawa, redemption periods. We're not changing any of them. No, no senator. Okay, because under existing law, may redemption period, di ba? Yes, we're not they could shortening any the of the time. No, no proposed shortening of the redemption period. No change in the redemption period. Okay, no change in the redemption period. Okay. Um, so, I think Senator Dillon, did you want to ask anything? Yes, uh, after you, Ralph. Okay. After you. So, um, maybe after Senator Ralph, we have Senator Dillon and then Senator Villar was also indicating, uh, wanting to ask a question. Okay. Go ahead, Senator. Okay. Rector. Now, if the, so going back to the Banco Central earlier, I think we have already a good uh, connection. Is that correct? No? So the. Yes, sir. Okay. 
what would be, in your estimate, the NPLs by the end of the year? Because you have a provision here ng cut-off period, December 2020, di ba? Y yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, so based what? on the... Yeah, based on the results of the baseline survey conducted by the Banco Central, the NPL is, is expected to double by end of the year. So we're at 2.5% right now. It will reach around 4.6% by the end of the year. Okay. And in actual value, how much is that? About 500 billion? Uh, close to 500 billion, sir. Okay. Uh, you made a presentation earlier on the NPLs, not 2.5% and end of the year, 46 What are the NPAs today of the banks? The non-performing assets. Um, let me just check my data, Mr. Chair. Non-performing. The total... Uh, sir, can we get back to you on checking the statistics that I have, sir? Okay. Okay. At 5%, what, are, what is the bank's uh, provisioning for non-performing loans today? The, the current provisioning uh, is at 100.8% as of NMD. That's the NPL coverage ratio. So that's allowance over performing loans. Again, again, can you repeat that? Your NPL as of June is 2.5%. So what is the, the non-performing? So naka-provision 5%. The non-performing loan, uh, non loan coverage ratio is 109.8%, Mr. Chair. So more than the current level of NPLs. Okay, so sa ngayon, covered na yan. It's not a problem, uh, di ba? Uh, sir Chair, I, yes po, the current level of NPLs. For, sir, may I go back to your earlier question, sir, on non-performing assets? Okay. It's uh, the, what, the, the, we call it ROPA, the real and other property card. It's at 105.9 billion pesos. Okay, so uh, that is your NPAs. So basically, Mr. Uh, Chair, it's um, the current level of 273.6 billion of NPL plus 125.9 billion of non performing assets. So that's the total non performing assets because the non performing assets it's comprised of the non performing loans. Plus the yeah. uh, non uh, ROPA or real and other property. Okay. And uh, just to, uh, no, to. So, in effect, sa ngayon, covered palat yan sa provisioning ng banko. The non performer, yes, po. Because okay. the bank already recognized additional provisions during the start of the year. Uh, in anticipation of the losses that will they, that they occur uh, because of the impact of the pandemic. Okay, uh, just a few more questions. No? I do have many more questions, but I'm sure that the Senate, Senators present would like to ask also their questions. No? Uh, from the Department of Finance. No? Um, we are willing to assist the banks, rightfully so, uh, uh, for them to address the problem of their NPLs and NPAs to have a sound a financial system, no? Okay. And so that there's more liquidity and more loans could be extended. Okay. Uh, what about assistance to borrowers? Uh, shouldn't we also assist borrowers to, to no fault of their own? Uh, uh, unlike in the Asian financial okay. crisis, it's possible that many borrowers overborrowed. Uh, and you had the real estate boom then, di ba? And then bumagsak, there was a bubble. No? Okay. But in this case, it is a pandemic. Okay? So, uh, are, shouldn't we also provide certain uh, tax subsidies to borrowers, especially those that may, alimbawa, will lose their homes? 
um, Senator Rector. So we will look into that. But uh, in terms of helping those that were also affected by the pandemic, as you may know, there's also uh, a twin bill that we are supporting together with the FIST, and that is the guide. And of course, that would have to be a separate discussion with us, um, with the committee. And this time, it will be helping the distressed companies, not of their own doing, but because of the pandemic that they have to go under because of the, the crisis that we are now experiencing. Okay, so we will do that through the guide bill. Yes, sir. So that would be the guide bill. Okay. Would you have any benchmarks? Like Halimbawa dito, if we're talking of 3 to 13 billion uh, based on your estimates for the banks, what would be the value naman, more or less, under the guide? It would be the same committee, eh? more or less. Eh? Sir, we have already done some estimates of if the, um, the special holding company will be set up and we can provide with those uh, estimates. Because, sir, there are different, uh, there are various scenarios that we are also looking into, particularly in give, terms of the yeah. valuation fund. Yeah. Can you give me a low number and a high number similar to this? 3 to 13 billion? Uh, Do naman magkano? Uh, we'll just uh, dig into our work file because we are not prepared to, for the guide. We'll come back to you, sir. Okay. Thank you for that. No? Uh, I do have more questions, but at this juncture, may I pass it on first to the other senator? So thank you very much, Leia. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam before, Chair. Thank you to the resource persons. Thank you, Senator Recto. Uh, before we go on to the, the questions of Senator Julon, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Uh, Senator Julon, you may proceed. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, to the Central Bank representative, uh, Ms. Javier, um, it is a fact that the, the, the uh, financial environment today, uh, when we're, we're enacting this uh, FIST bill, is different from the uh, envi environment that uh, the banking system had in 2002. Is that a correct statement? Uh, Madam, that's Madam, right, this? Senator. That's Sorry? right, Senator. We that's correct. We have already implemented reform measures after the Asian financial crisis that uh, enabled banks to build buffers through time. In, in fact, uh, 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 the fist that is being proposed today is, uh, is uh, uh, as you have said in your, in your presentation, is uh, to promote investor and depositor confidence and mitigate the harmful feedback uh, effects on the financial system, crisis on the real economy, uh, which is completely different from where we were in 2002 when we enacted uh, SPAB 1 uh, and then afterwards SPAB 2. Is that correct, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, in fact, Senator Recto, I researched on his interpretation on SPAB 1, um, uh, um, pointed out that the non-performing assets in the banking sector in uh, 2002 was, what, 18%? Would you confirm? And 2002, sir. So there was a need to improve really the soundness of the financial sector then. As of today, um, the non-performing uh, loan ratio stands at 2.2% and is expected to double by the end of the year. Baba. Uh, that's right, sir. Uh, the estimate is the NPL would reach uh, around 4.6%. That's the baseline, results of the baseline survey of the Banco Central. Yes. Um, it could reach uh, for, because uh, as uh, uh, Governor Diokno asserted, this is manageable, even at the 4.6 percent. At 4.6 uh, percent, sir, uh, given our existing buffer, it could still be, it's still within manageable levels. That's correct. It's still at manageable level. So, uh, how much in taxes are we giving up uh, when, in fact, our banking sector is in as, or in fact, the NPL ratio by the end of the year would still be manageable. 
in exchange, we are giving up collection taxes here. How much are we giving up? Sir, according to the figures shared by Treasurer Leia, it's around 3.3 .3 billion to 13.2 billion, if I'm if I correct, Sir Leia. Can, can I have that again? I, you were not very clear. How much in taxes are we giving up in forms of documentary stamp tax, in terms of withholding tax, in terms of uh, uh, value added tax, which is being waived? Huh? Uh, how much would that be? Again, for the record. Uh, yeah, uh, Treasurer Leia, please correct yeah. me. Senator Gilad. Um, yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, it's 3.3 .3 billion. 3 point? 3.3 billion to 13.2 billion. To 13.2 billion. Okay. So this is the amount of taxes that uh, is projected. Uh, uh, just for the record, Senator Frank, that's yes. 3 to 13 for five years, huh? Oh, for five years. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> for for yes, five years. Right. And... Uh, so, uh, could you would uh, a straight uh, uh, break up into five years of the uh, expected losses be a, a, a reasonable uh, computation, so that uh, uh, it's less than so? How much would it be for year one or for for year one, year two, year three? In other words, what I'm saying is, it fair? To say that for, for the range of 3.3% divided by 5, that's roughly how much? 3.3 divided by 5 is roughly? 66. Huh? 66. Six, six, 660 million uh, 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 to whatever, 13.2 divided by 5. Is how much? One hundred. Two point sixty four. Huh? Two point sixty four. Two. Okay. Is it is it a reasonable uh, uh, assertion that uh, we are giving up um, six hundred sixty million to two point sixty four billion per year in foregone taxes? Or no, just just getting your your. Um, if it's a Senator Gillon, if it's just a straight line averaging, uh, then that would yes. be the amount. Yes, that is why I'm saying is it fair to have a straight line? Uh, so, uh, I think it would um, depend on how much uh, non-performing loans each year, depending on the impact of the crisis and the recovery period, the pace of the recovery, of course, of the economy also. Uh, so, but anyway, let's stick to that for five years. The expected losses in revenue is 3.3 .3 billion to 13.2 billion, uh, as asserted by Senator Rato. Now, you know, where, where I was looking is at this FIST proposal, um, this is a good opportunity for us to examine wh what were the shortcomings of uh, SPAB, uh, the first the SPAB that we enacted in 2002. Uh, uh, and see areas where we can improve and make uh, this system uh, succeed. So, for example, I can start with how much was the non-performing assets in the banking sector when we enacted this pub in 2002? As of end um, 2001, uh, sir, the yes. NPL ratio is already at 8. 18.6%. So in, in absolute figures, how much would that be? Uh, we have to go back to you on that, Senator. We have to compare that with the total loan portfolio at that time. My research indicates that as of June 30, 2002, the total NPAs was approximately 520 billion. Can we uh, preliminary accept that as valid? Uh, so June 30, 2002, the NPAs in the banking sector was approximately 520 billion. 
We will check the level, Senator. We will go get back to you on that. Anyway, I, I think that's more or less correct because the total loan portfolio there was only $2 trillion. Eh? So, so more or less five hundred twenty. More or less. Uh, uh, yeah, more or less is, is uh, about the end. And uh, so this was the target of the spot then, right? Yeah, it's around $487.2 billion Senator, at that time, as of 2002. Okay, four hundred eighty-seven billion. All right, and uh, <clears throat> how much was transferred to the uh, um, uh, to the uh, SPAV vehicles as a consequence of the SPAV law? That was the objective, right? To strengthen the financial system and therefore move the NPAs to these uh, SPAV vehicles. How much? Uh, what first? What was our expectation? Did we uh, expect that the entire NPAs uh, would be transferred to the special asset, special purpose asset vehicles? Uh, it's not the uh, expectation, Senator, that the entire NPAs would yes. be offloaded okay. because How there are still remedial measures being undertaken by the bank. Okay. Um, it's at 146.2 billion were offloaded to special purpose vehicles. How much? 146.2 billion. 146.2 billion. And in terms of percentage, how much was that? Uh, uh, if you uh, uh, from the total NPAs, how much percent? How many percent? 146 over 487. Is that correct? Yeah, it's around 30%, Senator. 30%. That's what I'm 30%. I assume 30% is way off the targeted assets or NPAs that will be moved to the special purpose asset vehicles. Is that correct? Uh, I am not sure. I'm not uh, aware of the target at that time. But basically, okay. if we are looking at half of the portfolio, that's uh, significantly below the NPA portfolio at so that time. Wh when you come back, can you tell us exactly how much was the target? Because if so you're okay. saying that only 30% of the NPAs were moved to the special asset, special purpose asset vehicles, I don't think that uh, you can call that a success, as you have suggested in your presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Senator, if I may. Yes. Yeah, uh, the measure, the metric used by the BSP in terms of measuring the success of the program is the ability of the banking system to uh, manage their non-performing loans. And it actually resulted in the declining trend of NPL ratio. So um, actually, we already reached 3.6% in 2009. That's from 14.7% as of December 2002. So as far as the BSP is concerned, the ability of the banking industry to and, and reduce its non-performing loan levels and non-performing loan ratio is already a successful. OK, yes. Uh, with, with the permission of Senator Dillon. Yes, please, Ralph. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the reason why 30% uh, is because what they really sell to the SPAV, the assets that they sell are collateral land. In the, mm -hmm. Here in the non-performing assets and non-performing loans, kasama dito, uh, credit card loans, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, certain mga ganyan klase loans, but malaki ngayon yan. So mm -hmm. what they actually sell are the foreclosed collateral. In SPAV 1. In SPAV yeah. 1. In SPAV 1 and SPAV 2. I mm -hmm. think that will happen here as well. So the question really is, is how much of those NPLs are collateralized? Basically, the collateral is mostly land. Yun yung binibenta sa SPAV, eh, di ba? The SPAV naman doesn't really buy uh, let's say consumer loans. Do they buy consumer loans? I don't think so. But they're allowed they're to buy the land. Yes. Yeah, but in this bill, they're about, about allowed to buy that. Correct. In also, also in Spam yes, one. Yes, they are allowed to buy. That. Gentlemen, maybe we should ask uh, the SEC because they're the ones that will be implementing this. Uh, what their take on the 
the discussion is. Uh, do we have a representative from the SEC? Uh, good, good morning, Chair. Yes, Chair. Ms. Uh, Ms. Remalante. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, good, good morning, Chair and Senators. Uh, based on the discussion, Chairs and Senators, yes, we are fully supporting this bill. We have been contributing to the discussion as well in our discussions with the BSP. Uh, I think as mentioned earlier, there were 31 that were registered as SPV back in around 2000. Uh, to, to uh, I think 2003. This was a short period of time because of the coverage of the of the law by then. Um, I think uh, some of the, the the I think the, the discussions on the raw pass. I think there were these were mostly covered by the BSP then because most of the the FIs that were involved are banks. Uh, there were like few financing companies involved. I think a uh, senator. Uh, uh, I think Senator Jalan mentioned consumer loans all, all, are also covered in this one. Uh, but we don't have the exact numbers. I, I'll get back to you on, on those uh, certain data because we have to collect some of the information. And some of this we have already submitted to the BSP. Um, and right now for the SEC, uh, Madam Chair, we also, as mentioned by Senator uh, Marcus earlier, we uh, uh, we just recently approved the our MC23, which is on the corporate debt vehicle. This is actually to support also the the ailing companies, which are large and medium companies that were affected by the COVID, to actually um, for fund managers to create a vehicle that would allow uh, purchasing or making an underlying assets the corporate debts of these large and medium companies affected by, by the COVID. So um, we already submitted this morning, apologies, uh, Madam, Madam Senator, that we submitted our position paper also on the FIST bill. Uh, for the information of everyone, we also uh, fully support these proposed bills and we have submitted to the committee our comments also in the lower house uh, where it was, um, we, we we, we also suggested that some of the provisions we, uh, we, we provided therein be adopted also in the present bills. So that's for the SEC, Madam Chair. Um, maybe Senator Villar has a question. Initially, I, I, I saw you raise your hand, Senator Villar. Mom, I still have a few questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Senator yeah. Drillon first. I'm... Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, the Central Bank. Just a few more questions, and then uh, I'll come back later uh, to the Central Bank. Uh, to to Miss Javier, how much is our um, non-performing assets in the banking sector today in absolute amounts? Is it you said two point four percent as of March? Yes, uh, sir. I'm just uh, no, going much? back to my. It's. 387.8 billion non-performing assets. How much? 387.8 billion non-performing assets. And uh, how much do you expect uh, the uh, uh, special or the fist outfits or companies to uh, absorb from this uh, 357 billion? Sir, uh, basically, we are just looking at the historical experience. So we could just say that it's around 30% as well. Only 30%? No, because we're basing from the previous experience on the, of the, act, okay. on the implementation of the Act. And uh, you think that will uh, uh, promote investor and uh, deposit confidence in our banking sector? Uh, uh, yes, sir, because sir, um, uh, the NPL is actually an indicator of financial stability and investors actually compare our non-performing loan ratio with that of our peers in the region. So mm -hmm. for Southeast Asia, it's currently between 1.3 to 2.6%. Mm -hmm. 
And now we're at around 2.5%. That, that's for the investor. And secondly, um, Senator, if we keep the non-performing assets in the balance sheet of banks, it will eat up a significant amount of capital as well. Now, this would constrain them from lending to more productive sectors in the economy. So the credit would not be, I mean, it would be reduced significantly if they have a significant amount of non-performing assets in their books. And uh, third senator are just seeing the tip of the iceberg here because the impact of COVID-19 is still developing. I mean, the its impact on the borrowers, on the businesses, households and economies, it's still unfolding, continue to unfold. So we have yet to see uh, an absolute or accurate uh, quantitative measurement of the impact of COVID-19 because the survey conducted by the DSP is just an initial leg based oh. on the experience in the last um, community quarantine period, Senator. So you're saying that the 4.6% uh, projection by December is a very conservative product projection and it could go much higher than this? It, it may still potentially increase, Senator, as we still um, uh, uh, continue to battle the health crisis in the country. So uh, the, the impact is still unfolding and we're not, huge, not it's not only in the Philippines that the impact, uh, the jurisdictions are uncertain on the impact on banks, but we also have to keep in mind that as we continue with this journey, I mean, that's the only time we could actually see and um, estimate the impact of the pandemic on the bank's balance sheet, Senator. All right, I'll give way at this point to the other senators in fairness. But um, before I leave the uh, Banco Central, can you guide us in the committee? Which areas do you think can stand improvement uh, from where we were in uh, under this pub two? What were the provisions in this pub two which you feel can be improved uh, and therefore uh, enhance uh, investor and depositor confidence? Because uh, uh, certainly we would like to see uh, if there can be room for improvement, because if not, we'll just reenact in two to SPAB 1 and SPAB 2, which I don't think uh, would be a good policy, Madam Chair. So may I request at this point the Banco Central to analyze for the committee which areas uh, can be improved in terms of the law uh, uh, in, uh, in, in SPAB 1 and 2 versus the fist, proposed fist bill uh, that we are uh, considering today. So with that, I, I will await the uh, response of the Central Bank on this specific request, and uh, we'll yield the floor to our other colleagues at this point, uh, Mr. Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Julon. In fact, I'd like to note also that this is a priority measure, and yet it's disappointing to see that the heads of agencies didn't really attend. They didn't attend, and so, even if we get some information from those agencies where you can't really be sure if those are official statements from the director of that agency, well, particularly the BII. So, um, and then maybe it would also be more comforting if a higher level official from each department will do a presentation here and a commitment on what they're trying to do with this bill that they are proposing, we prioritize. So hopefully they'll also show that they are very serious about it and, and so that um, So that, Madam Chair, we do not set this uh, bill for hearing unless we're assured that uh, higher officials who can speak for the agencies can come around and tell the committee where exactly we stand. Uh, because, like, for example, with all due respect to Ms. Javier, they said, in effect, he said, ah, as long as we achieve the, uh, the, the uh, level that we achieved in the last time, that's, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I, I'm not uh, comfortable with that statement, uh, uh, Madam Chair, but, uh, and I do not know whether that is the official position. That is why I ask that give us a study of which areas we can improve on, given our experience on SPAB 1 and SPAB 2. Yeah, yeah Senator Rulon, that's that is noted. Um, Senator Villar, you're recognized. Mm -hmm. Mute na, uh, unmute na ba ako? <laughs> Can yes, you hear me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I think yung uh, projection nila dito sa SPAB 2 sa FIS is understated kasi I, I've said before, SPAB 1 was, 
was passed in 2002, five years after the 1997 recession. By the time they passed the SPUB one, uh, marami ng company ang nakaayos na ng mga problema nila. So I think uh, mas konti yung SPUB one relative to SPUB two because we're starting early. Oh, kasi noon I remember 2002. By the time recovered na yung mga company noon eh. Oh, as I remember that 1997 recession. By 2002, we, we were part of those companies and we recovered by 2002. So I think uh, mas understated yun kasi by that time, uh, konti na na yung may mga problema by 2002. So baka mas, mas uh, understated yung projection nila. And then at the same time, I'm asking, kasama dito yung credit card receivables, no? So, ibig mong sabihin, how do you how do you sell your credit card receivables? Ano ang mapapala nung spab doon? Eh, receivables yun, wala namang collateral yun. Do we include that? Uh, is that a good uh, ano, investment ba? Kasi itong spa, parang sinosolve yung temporary liquidity ng mga companies. But if you sell credit card receivables, ano ang makukuha mo doon? Uh, makakakolekta ka ba doon? Eh, ano lang yon Mga binili noon, pagkain at mga damit na by that time, bulok na yun. So ano ang Senator, support? Ano Senator support? VR, who are you directing this question to? Is it the DOF or the SEC? No, I'm asking uh, yung policy nila sa credit card receivables. Is that a good is investment for SPAB? SEC, you'll be the implementer of this uh, law. What do you get out of that credit card receivables? Unlike if uh, if the SPAB will buy the the real estate collaterals of banks, they can benefit from that, diba? Later on, but receivables, what can you get out of receivables? Uh, can they answer that? If that will be included in this SPAB law? Um. For the SEC, may I defer to the uh, BSP because we don't uh, we don't really uh, 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 we have don't we, we don't uh, monitor on the the credit cards. Uh, yeah, kasi sabi I... nyo kasama yung credit card sa i pwede ipagbili sa spam. But uh, I'm hindi bali yung mga banks na may mga real estate they will sell it to the spam. They will profit from it. Maybe at a later date, may value yun eh. Kaya lang walang liquidity mm. nila, kaya binibigay sa inyo. But credit card, can you think you can collect those credit card receivables <laughs> after five years or ten years? <laughs> yun ang question ko dito. We, will, will we include these credit card receivables? Kasi uh, wala tayong mapapalit. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I may, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, who is speaking? Uh, ben Castillo from the BAP, if uh, yes. I'll be allowed uh, yes. to respond to the Honorable yes. 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 Senator Go ahead, Bihar. Mr. Castillo. Uh, nung pong SPAB uh, 1, SPAB, SPAB 2, uh, mm -hmm. kasama po doon uh, sa carving out of the assets ng mga banko sold to the SPAB, clean loans. Kasama din po doon, therefore, yung mga credit card so what did you get out of it? Uh, uh, well, After a uh, while. Yung pong, uh, yung pong mga uh, transaction uh, uh, at that time, uh, meron ho silang composite discount. But if you break down the portfolio that were sold off by the banks to the SPAB, maba, ma, mataas po yung discount rate ng mga non-secured uh, loans. What is the difference between the discount rate of uh, real estate and non-secured loans? Ah, Yung secured uh, loans and non-secured loans. Of, uh, uh, looking at the transaction from the point of view of the SPAB, uh, a SPAB uh, will likely see an upside opportunity uh, in the collection of a loan that has an underlying asset. Yeah, yeah, that's better. But yeah, we know. Po, 
uh, a wala, loan unsecured is loan. The SPAB oh. will likely impose a very deep discount. What kind of discount? Uh, in those years, in the early 2000, umabot po na mga 80% ang discount. So we should indicate higher. that in the law. Kasi unfair naman na we will buy these receivables and then wala nang mapapala yung uh, uh, decision, decision na po yun ng, ng SPAD. Uh, hindi, sabi mo, uh, magmamanage SEC, eh, hindi nga alam ng uh, SEC. Uh, I'm, I'm talking po in what we did in the early 2000s. So, uh, I think we but, have to clarify this kasi hindi pwede yung ganyan because you're asking the government to to allow this pub. So, dapat naman may upside din ng government for this ano kasi okay. they just serve uh, they are just protecting the liquidity of these people. But uh, there should be some return on the government also kasi kawawa naman ng gobyerno na ibibigay sa iyo yung mga receivables na yon na hindi mo naman makukolekta na that's unfair di ba for the government. Right. Okay lang sa akin yung mga mga secured loans kasi yon at least over a period of time baka nga mas tumubo pa sila doon kasi mag-appreciate yon after the economy has recovered and they have an upside there but yung mga uh, unsecured loans may be, may may be very dangerous yan di ba so we have to make provision that uh, the one the government will be protected from unsecured loans na wala silang ma- makuha diyan after a while di ba okay. yun lang okay. Thank you. But another question is, sabi nyo hindi kayo magbibigay ng uh, tax exemption sa mga companies na nagdadasyon and pago because this is all for the for the ano for the uh, mga financial institutions na gustong maglagay ng non-performing loans nila sa SPAB. Pero from my remembrance, one of the reason why in a lautong spab para yung mga companies na mga merong collateral, may real estate, they will just turn over their their uh, uh, real estate properties to the bank to settle their loan at ang tawag doon ay dasyon and pago. And, and uh, maganda siguro na bigyan ng tax exemption yun kasi siyempre kaya sila nag, nag-turn over ng properties nila wala na silang pera tapos magbabayad pa sila ng tax to be able to turn over their properties to the financial institutions. So one way of encouraging them to settle their loans by turning over their real estate properties would be to have a tax exemption man lang do sa transfer tax nung kanilang ita-turn over na properties. This is just a manifestation on how to improve the SPAB law. Okay. Of course, it will depend upon the whole of the Senate how they will look at this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Villar, for the points you raised. In fact, uh, that, that will really be a concern about the unsecured loans if yeah. we are supposed to be that that might actually be a bigger ratio if we don't uh, yes. uh, uh, provide safeguards. Maybe uh-huh. a certain percentage only will be allowed for that. Um, mm. Now going to, uh, do we have any other, Senator Marcos, did, did you have a question? You know, I, I, I would like to say that uh, during the Bayanihan to aggress this, particular FIST provision was aggressively pushed by the DOF. In fact, um, even the NEDA secretary, acting secretary, uh, was lobbying for this to be included. So I think it would be more enlightening if they could also uh, give us the due respect and participate in our hearing uh, because I mean, this was initially conceptualized by them and pushed by them. So maybe I will ask the senators present here today to to ask the questions that you have uh, to our resource persons now okay. with the thought in mind that we will be asking the heads of agencies to attend next time. So I don't think we're going to prolong this hearing. So so let's just ask what we can right now. Senator Marcos. 
Thank you very much, uh, Chairwoman. At um, yeah. ito nga, although uh, one of the authors ako, eh, meron akong mga katanungan. Unang-una, dun nga sa Bayanihan 2, perhaps uh, Sunny Angara can also help us here and uh, Senator Recto. Nabanggit sa enumeration of credit granting institutions. Um, this refers to Section 3D. Perhaps the SEC could help us here and the BSP. Um, there is a proposal or a request that the insurance companies, as defined under the amended insurance code, should also be included. Clearly, they're not as significant in terms of loan assets, but they're likewise credit-granting institutions, and they would stand to benefit from this law. At isa yan sa mga amendment na talagang tinanggal na natin dun sa buong-buong tinanggal natin na paste sa Bayanihan 2. So kung marinig natin sana yung BSP o yung SEC, kung anong tingin nila sa inclusion ng insurance company. Is there anyone prepared to answer or I'll just uh, put it on record po? Uh, Madam, Madam Senator, for the Ay, SEC, uh, po. Uh, good morning. So um, I'm not aware that insurance companies can actually be a grant credit granting uh, entity, but um, I defer to the insurance commission on this and for the DOF to comment further and for the BSP. But I, I think uh, in, in my impression on the inclusion of the insurance uh, companies, it may be a parang... Um, uh, parang, parang hindi siya misplaced ang kanyang inclusion in that one because I'm not so and it's not clear in my my oh. understanding if it's actually a credit granting entity so yes, I defer also to tama they Apa. are that's yeah. why nagre-request sila kung pwede uh, mag-beneficio rin dito so perhaps uh, Senator Grace from the insurance uh, regulators and the other authorities we can pose the same question kung pwede naman isama yung insurance companies pagkat uh, humihingi sila ng tulong um, sa so section 12b meron rin request dito yung ibang uh, mga kumpanya na nag-iisip mag-spav that the 90-day period given to the borrower and the financial institution na mag-restructure, eh sobrang haba daw. Eh magkakos daw ng additional delay. Um, perhaps the SEC once again is um, qualified to answer this. Um, clearly, kung papasok na sila sa SPV, they're already undergoing uh, discussions, negotiations for potential restructuring, di ba? Bakit dadagdagan pa nung 90 days? Parang sobrang torturous na daw yung haba ng panahon. Could it be daw reduced to 60 days or less uh, so that the uh, financial institutions, the SPVs, can move on? Um. Madam, we, we defer to the to the legislature yeah. on this matter. If if that if the ninety yeah. days is too long, we, we defer to the. Kasi we, we don't... I may answer, ma'am. If I may answer that question, oh, this is okay. Lynn from. Oh, I see the yan. Ma'am, this is Lynn. From, oh, yes, ma'am. Please ma identify yourself. We can't see your. Yeah, sorry, ma'am. Ma this is Lina Vier from the BSP. Uh, that provision was also already deleted in the proposed uh, law, ma'am. Uh, some of them deleted it, some versions deleted, some didn't delete. And uh, clearly, this is also a uh, policy issue. If you want to be more borrower friendly, yung 90 days can be retained. Pero to help yung ating mga financial institutions, eh, gusto nila matapos na to, eh. Yes, ma'am. The proposal, or actually, ma'am, of the BSP is to delete that particular provision. In yes. That, yeah. uh, that, that appears also to be the request. I think the other issue will bounce back, Madam Chair, to uh, SEC regarding Section 12B. Ito na yung COE, yung mahiwagang Certificate of Eligibility. How do we simplify daw itong mga requirements dito? Kasi pagkarai-rai daw, marami daw sa kanila nagdasyon and pagod na sa hapagod sa ka-apply sa SEC, eh di pa matapos-tapos yung COE nila. Um, Madam Chair, I think we can provide some streamlining for the processing of the I think this is going to be a certificate of authority or certificate of uh, uh, authority to sell or uh, offer, yun po yung proposal namin. Uh, 
it, so that's already it, it, simplified. Wala nang uh, eligibility, tapos may mahabang listahan ng criteria. Wala nang ganon. Ma'am, I think it is already provided. Yung basic po is already in the law. Uh, if meron lang po kaming mga recommendations under this, this fifth bill, is that yung mga discretion lang na yung ibang items would be under the uh, the SEC, like yung mga periods lang, like uh, nag-provide lang kami ng flexibility upon the time of registration when they can actually file the plan. Kasi pwede naman po yun, gawin nila. It's a simultaneous uh, a deal that they can do uh, while they are registering as a fist company, corporation. They can already um, uh, undergo the 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 plan. Bali na yeah, they can na start nila the water. process. Yes po. So uh -oh. parang ano, hindi na kami nag-provide ng period when they should be doing it kasi it's uh, we, we, we want to defer it to the companies. Yung timing nila, yung kanilang strategy when they want to have it approved. Once they have completed it naman ma'am and we always follow naman uh, Madam Senator ang ating mga <laughs> ARTA requirements on the periods. Yeah. So, kung, kung, kung hindi naman po siya highly technical, we'll try mm. naman po na to limit it to 21 days. Yun ay Madam, maximum day. Apo. Madam Chair, may reklamo rin kasi tungkol dyan, dyan sa COE na yan, dahil tinuturing daw ng BSP na cleansing process. Baka naman we can ask also the BSP, uh, following the recommendations contained in Dr. Gloria Pasadilla study, na... Wag nang uh, pahabain masyado yung procedure at iklian na lang baka yung yeah. CBs up yes, there. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. We will work on the the basic requirements will be in the law, ma'am. And then the certificate of eligibility actually um, allows us to check whether the assets that were transferred are eligible for the tax incentives. That's the purpose of the checking. But yes, ma'am, we, we are with you in streamlining the requirements and facilitating the issuance of the COEs because it also eats up a lot of resources if we go one by one. So we're also adopting, um, again, streamlined measure in this respect for this version of the law, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Isa na lang, para kompleto na yung homework na binibigay natin sa kanila, isa na lang, eto, ikokonsulta ko yung mga abogado kasi hindi ako maliwanag dito. No? The Article 1634 of the Civil Code um, has been utilized in several cases. The best known and uh, the one that's square on the SPV is Eagle Ridge Development Corporation versus Cameron Granville 3 Asset Management Inc. May concern lang ako rito kasi dun sa civil code, sabi talaga na lahat ng um, redemption periods allowed to borrowers uh, will be up. I'm sorry, mali. Sa section 19 ng SPV dati, ah, yung lumang SPV, Lahat ng redemption period given to borrowers and uh, all other under all other laws will be applicable, ano? And then, ang nangyari kasi dito, um, magkakaroon ng um, uh, right of legal redemption yung uh, sa transfer price plus the cost of money up to the time of redemption. So parang na curveball yung ating effort sa SPV. Uh, should we exempt this from the civil code, given that the precedent of the Eagle Ridge case uh, could scuttle our efforts to help uh, distressed companies? Siguro pag-aralan na ng lang legal ninyo yan. Kasi medyo masalimuot siya eh. Tama yung Supreme Court eh. Talagang in nila yung civil code. Kaso, eh, hindi ata maganda yun kung ang pakay natin, eh, tulungan itong mga kumpanya. Parang pinahirapan pa natin kasi ang haba-haba na naman ng redemption period. Tapos uh, yung... Um, Financial, economic analysis, evaluation ng iba't ibang loan portfolio will uh, cripple, potentially cripple, the effectiveness of our law. Yun lang po. Thank you, Senator Marcos, for calling attention to those provisions. I will certainly uh, look forward to their answers in our next hearing. Um, next, I think we have uh, Senator Gachalian. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, can you hear me? Is it clear? Yes, I can. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. I, I just have a few questions to BSP to um, to Ms. Javier. Uh, I was listening intently earlier to the premise of this law, 
And the premise is to clean up the uh, banking system of non-performing loans and repoas. Um, and, we, and then we compared it to uh, the uh, financial crisis. Uh, but looking at the numbers earlier, as propounded by Senator Recto and Senator uh, Drilon, um, ngayon po ang projected natin by end of the year is about 4.6%. Uh, uh, but if you look at the Asian financial crisis, umabot tayo as, to as high as 20%. And right now, um, the cover for the NPLs is about 109 and uh, we all know that this pandemic is a uh, is a demand driven pandemic no or a demand side effect so uh, a lot of people are projecting that uh, businesses will bounce back as soon as uh, the pandemic will be over so my question is uh, is it fist too premature uh, for uh, at this time because if you look at uh, the Asian financial crisis, umabot po ng 20%. Uh, kaya po uh, pumasok ng SPAB. But at this time, we're only at 4.9% uh, by the end of the year. So my question to the BSP, isn't it too premature uh, uh, in acting this law? Uh, yes, uh, so, Madam Chair, if I may answer, this is Lina Vier from the BSP. Go ahead, please. Yes, um, uh, Senator, we are actually proposing for the early enactment of the law to have a ready facility in case the non-performing loan ratio of the banking industry uh, accelerates. Uh, the SPD Act back in the Asian financial crisis uh, was um, enacted um, quite belatedly already, and we already sustained NPL of around 18%. So that already affected investor confidence in the banking system, as well as constrained the ability of the banks to lend. Because if you have high non-performing loan and non-performing assets, you have to set aside 150% capitals for every one peso of non-performing assets. It's 150 pesos that you have to set aside, and you will not be able to lend because of that high NPL uh, and NPA ratio at that time. So we we, we feel that having this ready and available, we will be able to help uh, the banking industry immediately. And um, the impact of the crisis is still continuing to unfold. So we don't have an accurate estimate yet of the impact of the pandemic on the balance sheets of banks, um, Senator. So, Ms. Sabir, what will be, uh, with, with, the, with this fish law, uh, it will change also the behavior of the banks. And uh, from your experience and, and uh, analysis, especially during the uh, financial crisis, the 97 financial crisis, how will the fish law change the behavior of the banks? Uh, Senator, in terms of credit underwriting and being more aggressive as to their risk appetite, I, I don't think it will change because the BSP has already set up guidelines in terms of adopting prudent underwriting measures. That is, you lend to institutions that have the capability to pay off the loan. Now, during the, this crisis, the BSP issued that banks should be able to determine and distinguish borrowers who have temporary cash flow pressures from those borrowers who have deeply rooted solvency issues already. And um, it's also set out in the BSP guidelines that before you actually foreclose or uh, go to the last um, measure, you have to exhaust all possible means in terms of collecting. So, so basically, Mr. Chair, what I'm saying is that even with the enactment of the law, this will not expose the banking industry to undue risk or um, say aggressive uh, lending and careless lending to, to, to borrowers. But well, in fact, we're providing them a facility to ensure that will, they will be able to continue to lend, not just standing the challenges in the business environment. In fact, that change the risk, their appetite to risk or to lending activities, but to, uh, but to extending assistance to their borrowers will change because the FIS, uh, law will uh, give the banks uh, another method to transfer uh, non-performing loans to a special purpose vehicle. And um, in, in that case, it will be a disincentive for them to negotiate further and to see to it that their borrowers 
can withstand this temporary impact of COVID. Uh, my assessment is, and, and many experts' assessment is, this is really a temporary dip because of demand. But if there is this mechanism already, then why negotiate and help your borrowers? Instead, we transfer na lang natin. Total, we get a lot of uh, benefits through taxes, and also we can uh, we can uh, extend the losses through uh, through uh, through uh, through uh, different uh, extend the losses after a few years. So, isn't it a disincentive for banks to uh, to assist their borrowers to? withstand the effects of this crisis? Um, not, not really, Senator, because most of the relief measures, the relief measures granted by the BSP are actually anchored of, on the banks restructuring and providing equivalent relief to their borrowers. Now, these relief measures in, include deferred recognition of past due and NPL, as well as staggered booking of allowance for credit losses. So um, the, the menu of me relief measures granted by the BSP are actually actually to incentivize banks to provide relief also to their borrowers. And um, uh, considering there are, ver there are uh, several control points under the proposed law that would uh, um, actually uh, ensure us that this will not be abused in terms of um, uh, depriving the borrowers of that opportunity to restructure. We have emphasized to banks that they have to be able to assess the financial capacity of the borrowers. And you're right, Senator, that most of this borrowers are only experiencing temporary cash flow pressures. So the issue once, uh, this was mentioned by Senator Aimee earlier, the certificate of eligibility by the BSP would actually allow us to assess whether these accounts uh, went through that process before they would qualify for offloading to the SPV vehicle, Senator. So, so Ms. Javier, the COE is the safeguard for the borrowers because we don't want a scenario where in the borrowers will be uh, um, will be uh, pressured, uh, and it becomes a disincentive to the banks to extend as much as possible to their borrowers because, in effect, we can transfer them on the NPL to an SPV, and uh, it basically it's almost costless to transfer it there. So, from a from my from a bank's point of view. Uh, why extend negotiate? Uh, why extend assistance and negotiate wherein you can transfer immediately uh, to an SPV? So I, I'm just I, I just want to know what are the safeguards for the borrowers because definitely it's not the fault of the borrowers at this time. You know, um, not not like the financial crisis where a lot of the borrowers overborrowed, overextended themselves. Uh, marami dong kasalanan rin nila, but in this case, it's not their fault. What I said. Yeah. Uh, Madam uh, Chairman. Yes, let's, yes, Senator. Yeah. We... That's precisely the point I was driving at earlier, what Senator Wynn is saying, no? Uh, the relationship between lenders and borrowers, no? Because there are provisions here that I notice which actually changes that relationship. Now, for the next meetings, maybe we can invite. Okay, um, a problem along one association and borrowers, eh? <laughs> but maybe we should invite um, uh, certain borrowers to get their inputs as well, to safeguard their interests too in this bill. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Um, go ahead, Senator Wynn. Yeah, Miss Miss Lee, I just want to understand what are the the safeguards for our borrowers so that they will not be uh, uh, pressured or. Um, and, and, and fear, um, they will not be given the fairness that they deserve during this temporary uh, event. Yes, um, for, for the bill, um, Senator, we have provided eligibility criteria for loans that will be um, qualified as eligible for offloading. And then we have the certificate of eligibility also that will be issued by the BSP that actually checks into the qualification of the accounts or making the accounts eligible for, for offloading. The bill also have, uh, we have also proposed to incorporate a consumer protection mechanism under the bill. That's, that's uh, the right of the borrower to be informed and um, adequate disclosure as well of, of these transactions. 
So um, we believe, Mr. Chair, that uh, based on the control provided and existing regulations also of the BSP in terms of the end-to-end -end, um, credit granting process, uh, the, the borrowers will not be uh, abused actually by banks in this respect. Also, uh, the, the banks will also be bearing some losses when they're disposed to the SPV, uh, Senator. So... Uh, it, actually, Yes, related to this, Ms. Lynn, how many of the NPLs are real estate? Uh, we have to get back to you on that, Senator. For, for But for the non-performing assets, Rachel, for the real and other properties acquired, it's at around 280 billion pesos. And just check. But in terms of percentage, how much is real estate? Two uh, NPLs and two Rukowa. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to you on that, Senator. We'll just check. Is it more than 50%? Is it more than 50%? Probably. We will check, Paul. We'll check, Paul. I'm sure it's more than 50% because that's the easiest to mortgage. That, that's for and, the... Uh, yes, go ahead. No, Senator, I wasn't uh, saying something, Paul. No, I, I'm sure it's more than 50%. My, my, and then, uh, as we all know, a lot of our big banks are also real estate developers. You know, a lot of them have affiliates that are huge real estate developers. And um, by, by, uh, by uh, coming up with this law, uh, it's also incentivizing uh, affiliate real estate developers of banks to pick and choose uh, prime real estate of their borrowers. Uh, in effect, um, uh, in effect, uh, 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 the borrowers, their borrowers might uh, have a uh, might be in a disadvantage uh, when this uh, type of interest comes in. So, what type of safeguards do we have for real estate borrowers who are also transacting with banks who have large real estate affiliates. Uh, Senator, if um, so far as the related parties of banks are concerned or the real estate developers that are related to banks are concerned, the BSP actually has issued strong related party transactions guidelines. So there are limits set out there, um, uh, approval mechanism, as well as the BSP challenges the terms uh, the terms and conditions of transactions between the bank and its related party. So this could actually be considered as an unsafe or unsound banking practices if there are abuses along the line in terms of uh, transactions between the bank and its related party um, are concerned. I'll give you an example. For example, I'm a real estate borrower and I borrow from a commercial bank who has an affiliate uh, who is into real estate developer developing? Uh, isn't it I will be put in a disadvantage because uh, I will be um, uh, uh, a, 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 a liberal negotiating uh, mechanism will not will not be given to me because I might be uh, prejudiced by the affiliates. What is the safeguard to me that I will not be uh, at a disadvantage and a fair negotiating uh, mechanism uh, will be uh, extended to me? Okay. Uh, the, uh, apart from the, as I uh, um, mentioned earlier, Senator, apart from the consumer protection mechanism provision already provided in the proposed law, the BSP has um, regulations to ensure that the depositor and the public, that they are protected whenever at each time the bank has a transaction with its related party. So it is not just confined to the, the borrowings or this SPV transaction, but the entire transaction, we are making sure that the depositor and the public are not disadvantaged. So there are already control mechanisms in terms of existing laws uh, embedded in the BSP's regulations, as well as the consumer protection yeah. mechanisms in the in this uh, in this proposed law, Senator. Yeah, but the, the relationship there, Miss Lynn, Miss Javier, is between the bank and the borrower. Pero wala siyang, the borrower doesn't have any relationship yet with the SPV. 
In the SPV, if these assets will be transferred to an SPV that is affiliated to a, a, a bank, then uh, it creates a uh, unfair or disadvantageous environment for the borrower. Uh, yes, Senator. The, the regulations I was mentioning on related party transactions, it would cover transactions between the bank and its affiliate company. So what will happen is that the BSP would assess the propriety of the terms of the transaction between the two entities So uh, to ensure that the public and the depositors, including the borrowers, are not uh, put at a disadvantage. Another control feature, uh, Senator, under the law is that for instance, the bank would want to invest in this fit C to, for the benefit of their, say, uh, group or related uh, parties. The, the proposed law limits investment of banks in this fit corporations to only 10%. So that's uh, way what below. Is the, what, is the, what is the logic of that 10%? The, the 10%. Uh, the 10% actually provides bank with, with um, adequate um, investment in that company without it being able to, to uh, exercise significant influence on the company or partake in significant decision making. I think Senator Win, so that the bank will have an upside later on. Pag binentering assets at a higher price, kaya siya may 10%. But you know, you're correct, and precisely those are the questions that we wanted to raise as well. No? In fact, many of the SPABs that were created in SPAB 1 and SPAB 2, yun yung mga real estate companies na nakikita natin ngayon na affiliated with the banks. <laughs> correct. Uh, those are the... Yung po yung, uh, that's right, uh, Senator Reto. Yung Most po of them are right before the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's just, just one last point uh, no, with, with the permission of Senator Wynn. No? Yeah, Senator okay. Rector, go ahead. Yes, yeah. and I just wanted to manifest that here. No, uh, Halimbawa, um, I think in SPAM 1, you know, we protected also homeowners. Okay, um, Meron siyang right of first refusal. Din. Okay, I think we should protect homeowners as well, especially in this case na may pandemic, hindi makabayad sa banko, and then suddenly, if foreclose ang banko, ibebenta sa SPAP. Okay? So, I think we should assist them too para yung mga bahay naman lang hindi ma-foreclose agad-agad ng banko. ba? And that's why under the law, you have redemption periods as well. May one-year redemption period ka. So, I don't think we should change many of these relationships between creditors and borrowers too. Diba? ba? Uh, and to uh, to put adequate safeguards as well in the bill. No? And uh, as rightfully pointed out, based on the NPL ratios today, while I agree that we need to assist the banks too, no? mababang mababa pa. It might be too premature at this point. No? Unless, for example, the BSP can tell us, because the projections were only until the end of this year, and then may cut off pa dito until the end of the year on the NPLs. What is the projection of the BSP on NPS and NPAs for next year? Meron na ba kayong projections yan? Oh, we don't have that data yet, Senator. We have to conduct or rerun the survey on the estimates for the NPS. But, but isn't it true that the real estate companies, the full brunt, ang tama sa kanila sa real estate companies will be maybe first quarter, second quarter next year pa? Uh, we are not aware of that information, Senator. We, we just base it on the reported figures of banks, Senator. But we will check. Po. Yeah, because you know, if you read the papers, we know that the POGOs already nababawasan na yan, and we know also that the uh, residential and commercial uh, there is now an oversupply. We know that the uh, eventually, tatamaan yung mga real estate company, which eventually will hit the banks. Yeah, uh, because, Senator, uh, of the implementation also of the um, the mandatory grace period as well as the relief measures granted by bank, um, they, they would be able only to assess the impact after the implementation of those relief measures. Because that's when they will be able to estimate already the cash flows of their borrowers. So, would you say that by the end of the year, dumpalang natin makikita yung full brand? 
uh, with um, if we consider, sir, the additional grace period under the proposed, uh, I mean, the Bayanihan 2, sir, that would be Q1. We'll be able to see at least... For uh, the 60 uh, days, right? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. So you won't but, see the full after... drop by the end of the year. Mm. But you have a cutoff here, huh? December NPS as of December 31, 2020. Well, that's right, Senator, because basically and, after the first leg of the ECQ and the mandatory grace period, you'll we'll be able to assess the cash flows again of the borrowers. Yeah, which means if you put here December 31, 2020, what is eligible only are those NPS as of December 31, 2020. But the full brunt will come in next year. Okay, so you won't be able to transact those with a SPAB. Because that's after December 31. That's why we're saying it might be a little premature, no? But yes, we understand that we need to put up something eventually. Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm just following up also some of the points raised by Senator Will. Thank you, yeah. uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. I think Senator Frank is uh, raising his hand in relation to the same topic. Senator Frank? Yes. Well, actually, uh, <clears throat> I have a few more questions, like uh, following up on the... Uh, uh, on, on the suggestion of Senator Recto, is it proper to have a trigger mechanism in the, in the bill so that it will only come into effect if a certain uh, uh, ratio, uh, NPL ratio, uh, is, uh, gets into our system so that that is when really uh, the uh, aid to the bank would be necessary? I'm just throwing that out as, uh, as a possible policy discussion, which brings me to the point, Madam Chair. A lot of questions being raised here would require uh, policy decisions. And again, with all due respect to our present resource persons, they would admit that the uh, number are policy issues which only the heads of the agencies can respond to. And uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the uh, Ms. Javier has so stated several times. So in, in that regard, uh, Madam Chair, also given the fact that it's already 12.30, May we move that uh, we are joined today's uh, hearing, subject to your discretion, Madam Chair, and uh, we set the next hearing only at the time when Secretary Dominguez, Governor Jokno, uh, the SEC Chair, uh, Carl Chua, uh, and, uh, can be present so that uh, we can, you know, we, we can uh, have definite answers so that you can, we can draft the report to the Senate. Otherwise, unless we get all of these uh, uh, policy makers to commit uh, on the record what, are the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, what direction we're going to, I'm afraid that um, you cannot come up with a definitive um, uh, committee report. So with that, Madam Chair, uh, subject to your discretion and the members of the committee that we adjourn and we give the chair the uh, uh, authority to set at the next hearing with the presence of the heads of the agencies involved. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. That's my motion. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Julon. I, I, I agree with that. Um, we have the resource persons here, but unfortunately, they can't really speak officially and make a commitment for their own agencies uh, without the approval of their heads. So, but before we wrap up, and I would just like to ask that, Senator Wynn, are, are you done with yours? Uh, Senator Grace, I just have one last question on, the, on this topic. Point. And I will one last ready. point. Yes, one. And then um, Senator Ogara, and then we're going to adjourn. Yes, yes. go ahead, One Senator last point, Ma Yes, one last point, Madam Chair. To Ms. Lynn again, no? in Section 3, Letter J, uh, under the definition of true sale, uh, there is a profit sharing mechanism there. You know? And this is not uh, present in the SPAB law before. Uh, what is the intention of the profit sharing scheme in the true sale, uh, Ms. Sabir? Uh, the profit sharing uh, mechanism, uh, Senator, is just to to allow in terms of sharing of potential profits and uh, disposing uh, of the non-performing assets, it's also giving some the banks also a skin in the game in this uh, in this respect, sir. <laughs> but, then, uh, but don't you think it? 
don't you think it might uh, arise to some potential conflict? As uh, what the Senator Rector elaborated, the offshoot of the previous uh, financial crisis are real estate behemoths that were uh, that real estate uh, that they took advantage of the real estate transfers. Well, the 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 arrangement, the, <laughs> the arrangement should be structured in such a way that it wouldn't actually put into question the the transaction as a true sale because we also have some metrics or measures accounting wise uh, senator on the transfer of risks and rewards to this SPV so this would be further articulated during the discussion we said that this would be further articulated or the measures in the uh, IRR senator yes ma'am Javier paki submit na lang po please submit to the committee the safeguards uh, as i elaborated earlier because uh, again, no, just to wrap up, is we don't want to, uh, we don't want a, a, a scenario where in conflict of interest might arise in this law. So we want to make sure that the true intention of this law is uh, is being practiced. So we'll just submit to us the safeguards. Thank you, yes, Madam Chair. We'll do Senator. Thank you, Senator Wynn. In fact, uh, these safeguards that you mentioned, I don't, I think it's a very crucial. Uh, for it to be not included in the actual provisions and to be left to an I, uh, with a, for an IRR. So maybe we can see how we can incorporate here. Senator Agara is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I agree with Senator Drillon that uh, the heads of agencies should be here and uh, uh, subject to the wishes of the chair whether to adjourn or not. i just like to place on record some of my initial Queries. I'd like to pursue some of the points uh, raised by Senators Gachalian and Recto. Um, I, um, maybe we can get a submission from the Philippine Competition Commission as to the effects on market power uh, or market uh, position, uh, market share uh, of the players in both the real estate as well as the banking industry. Previous to and uh, subsequent to the um, passage of the first uh, SPV law or the SPV law, uh, Madam Chair, because that would show us whether the points pursued by our colleagues earlier um, that uh, th there was re resulting uh, consolidation, etc. Uh, we could see the extent of that, uh, uh, Madam Chair. No? And then also... Um, I'd like to pursue the point regarding uh, litigation because I think the first uh, SPB law uh, led to many cases being filed. I think, um, and I, I noticed there's a, there's a provision which allows a holding period for the purchasers or the special purpose vehicles or the FISTs that would uh, purchase the, uh, the foreclosed assets. So in this case, um, may I get a report on the um, what what the resultant cases were? In fact, I, I get I'm getting some uh, uh, anecdotal evidence that there are actually pending cases to this day, and many of the SPVs have not yet consolidated their ownership on uh, some of these assets. No, so that this is uh, almost two decades after the first law was passed. So I think we should learn from these mistakes, uh, Madam Chair. So. If we could get a uh, a comprehensive report on subsequent litigation, and as mentioned earlier, from the Philippine Competition Commission, maybe a a, a study uh, on uh, market power, market share in the banking and real estate industries, so we could see how the how the law would uh, would come into effect, or or what role it has played in the past, and then to maybe mitigate or possibly respond to that. Uh, um, uh, our account uh, coming from that, what we expect from our uh, regulators. Now. So that's all, Madam Chair. I don't intend to uh, delay the meeting. Some of our colleagues, I think, have other meetings uh, and we have session in a few in an hour or two. So thank you, Madam Chair, for giving us the time. I, I, I'd, uh, I'll just follow up on the answers in the subsequent meeting. Salamat po, Madam Chair, and to our resource persons. Thank you, Senator Sani. Maybe perhaps in, in, when we come back, we will have a statement from the PCC regarding yes, uh, the, the question of Senator Angara. Um, Although, unless you have something quick to say now. I, yes, Madam Chair, thank you very much for the opportunity. As regards to the, um, the 
questions of Senator Angara, we look into the we will look into the uh, effects, competition effects of um, the previous SPV laws that were passed uh, earlier in the 2000s. Uh, we just were able to, unfortunately, we were only able to um, come across one study that uh, took into account uh, competition effects of. Um, uh, I'm sorry, attorney. Someone's puppy is hungry. Um, I'm so sorry that. <laughs> turn off your mic or feed your dog. Always Thank you. In a meeting, I, I I apologize. Solo. Oh, oh, it's your puppy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, senators. Yes, it's it's his time to eat. I, I apologize. They can, they, Madam, they can just uh, submit the report so the puppy can eat. Yes, yes. <laughs> Attorney, balik ka na lang. Yes, yes, Senator. Uh, I just want to state though that um in other studies, uh, in other studies, in other cases. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Can can you show that puppy at least? We'll have like some relief. Get your puppy. I actually placed him outside so he won't bother me, but uh I but now he's there. I think he's okay. I think he's okay. Uh, oh, yeah. again, very uh, we were able to get uh go through a uh, couple of studies in in um in other jurisdictions which dealt with uh, competition issues after um the asset management policies were in place and we would like to say that they were actually pro comp that the bill is actually more pro comp oh. yeah. sorry um okay. is that better no <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> I'm so sorry, um, senators, uh, members of the committee. I apologize. Um, so, uh, it, in any case, in other jurisdictions, it has been documented that this kinds of policies, uh, SPVs, uh, asset management uh, policies, right after a recession, proved to be more of a pro-competition policy. Um, it actually prevented consolidation in the banking sector, at the very least. So um, we will submit to you our um, position paper. And again, I apologize for No, it's my okay. Apology. Attorney Faye, we have, this is the, the new normal that we're dealing with and we're all very confusing so when it comes to that. Um, just submit to us because I know that the, PPC, the PCC is run by a lot of very, uh, well, uh, experts. So please submit the studies that you have and maybe in our next hearing we'll also invite those that actually availed of the SPV in the past and, and we'll see what uh, benefit it has given them and maybe the obstacles they had run into. So with that, uh, Senator Marcos is recognized. Uh. Yes, just a quick comment that um, uh, following uh, Chairman Angara, following uh, the Bayaniha 2, um, perhaps there's room despite attorney face uh, studies na dagdagan natin ng non-collusion or uh, uh, a clause regarding anti-competitive behavior lang ng SPVs just uh, to cover that area. Kasi wala siya sa ngayon eh, pero naisip ko lang dagdag na natin para sigurado. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Okay, so we will adjourn. Uh, we will suspend this hearing. In the meantime, let me remind the resource persons here to please tell your principals to attend our next hearing. Otherwise, um, otherwise, as, and I'm, I'm talking specifically about the DOF, the SEC, the BIR, um, and all the other DOF and all the other agencies that need to be present here with their heads. Because otherwise, uh, this is actually an initiative that those agencies are pushing. And if they're not present here, it will look like it's us pushing it, when the truth is, you are supposed to be, they are supposed to be the experts. They're the ones that they're saying that the economy needs it now. So how will we know for sure that the economy needs it now if we don't even have a commitment of a, uh, an actual presence from those heads explaining to us in detail what their commitments are also and the safeguards that they're willing to accept. So with that, uh, I thank our senators for being present here today as well as our resource persons. Uh, we will now suspend our hearing. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next time for 9 a.m. Thank you, Grace. Ikaw lang naman ang gising ng ano eh.
5 a.m. Eh. Ma'am, parang hindi magutom yung mga 